Okay, so normally I would have two camera angles for my video, but this time the far camera file was corrupted when it transferred to the computer, so I really just have the close shot for this video. Since these videos take about, you know, like four to six hours to shoot, and I was going to just try to use this footage with a voiceover instead. If you like this type of video production better than what I normally do, which is a two shot where I'm standing farther away and there's uh, cutting to the close-ups, let me know. If you like this version better where you're, there's no cuts at all, let me know in the comments. If you like the other version better where there's two different video angles and I talk a little more about the process, let me know that in the comments as well. So onto the cake here. This is what I call my black velvet cake. It's really not a velvet cake because it's not using a bunch of acid and base to change the color, but it's a better name than my very favorite chocolate cake or whatever. This cake and frosting combo really genuinely is wonderful though. It's dark and rich. It's got a wonderful chocolate flavor and you can easily top this cake if you wanted to. You, you wouldn't have to use this, this recipe for the fudge frosting I'm going to show you. Instead, you could just do a cream cheese frosting and it would be wonderful. This chocolate cake with a cream cheese frosting would be absolutely wonderful. And if you're looking for a cream cheese recipe, cream cheese frosting recipe, just look uh, at my carrot cake recipe, which is linked above. Now, this is a boiling water cake, so you're actually going to need a kettle or some boiling water. You can also use old coffee if you want. We're going to start by sifting the dry ingredients. Now, we got to sift today because cocoa can really clump up. And just hitting it with a whisk might not actually break it up. So I'll add my cocoa and my flour to a fine strainer. I'm using Dutch process cocoa. It's going to give the cake a really dark color, which is what I want. I'm adding the leavening also here. Now, sugar in cakes is not normally added to the dry ingredients. It's added to the wet ingredients to make sure that it ties up the moisture to inhibit gluten production. We don't want a bunch of extra gluten in a cake. So I'm going to sift this, tap it against my hand. Once it's sifted... I'm just going to sprinkle my salt on top because it's kosher salt and it wasn't going to fit through the strainer. If you have fine salt, you could just drop it directly in there. Now, for the wet ingredients, I'm adding my milk and the vegetable oil. I'm using peanut oil. You can use any vegetable oil that you like. I'm adding vanilla and three eggs. Now, these eggs are pretty small, so I'm actually going to add one more. You want three large eggs, and these were very small eggs, so I'm adding four eggs. So I'm going to whisk this up here. And I'm going to add my sugar after it's whisked. And I'm bringing the, the kettle up to temperature too. I'm going to add all these wet ingredients that I have right now to the dry and mix it on low until it all blends together. I'll scrape the bowl down a few times along the way just to make sure I get it all. Now, I'm going to add the boiling water here. I added a couple of tablespoons of espresso. Like I said, you could use coffee if you want. You could just use hot water. I really like adding some little bit of coffee flavor to this, in this case, the espresso powder, because it adds a different layer of bitterness to the chocolate, so it's, it really is a wonderful flavor. So I'm going to turn this on low with the paddle attachment. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spin it on low while I'm adding this very slowly. Do not add this too quickly because it will splash over the side. Once it incorporates, you can add a little more and just keep going until all the hot water or coffee is incorporated. Scrape the bowl down too, as you see fit. So if you're using a non, non-stick pan, what is that, a stick pan? Anyway, uh, if the pan is non-stick, you can get away with just a coating, a good coating of cooking spray. But if not, if you're using one of the, a pan that isn't non-stick, you're going to want to not only spray it down, but you're going to want to flour it down and tap that flour around, get a nice like thin coating of flour on there as well. And even if you want, you could put parchment in there too. This cake is super moist, and that's why. We want to make sure that it releases from the pan. Okay, the batter is super liquid. I'm going to pour it about three-quarters of the way up. This cooks at a 350-degree still oven or 325 convection until it's done. I'm going to give you sort of a rough estimate. Start checking it around 25 minutes, but it, it might even cook for an hour. Probably 45 minutes, it'll probably be done, but I wouldn't bet on that. I would definitely start checking it much earlier. You're going to check it by putting a toothpick in the center, if it comes out clear, with or without crumbs, and it doesn't matter, as long as it's not wet, the cake's done. Mm -hmm. 
So for the frosting, we're doing an anglaise ganache frosting. We're going to start by cutting the butter up and putting it in the chocolate. Add the cream to the pan and scald it. This is basically bringing it to a boil and then just taking it right off the heat. While it heats, whisk your sugar, yolks, and vanilla together. Then slowly whisk in the hot cream once it's finished scalding. Now add all this mixture back into your saucepan over a medium heat until it gets napping. Now this can be medium low. You want to go real slow here. You want to get this up to about 180 degrees. You do not want it to boil. You will get sweet scrambled eggs if you do that. Once it starts to thicken and gets the right consistency, it's and that's sort of thick enough to coat the back of the spoon or coat the spatula. When you pull it off, you'll see if it's coating it and it's not turning into clumps because you want to keep stirring it, then it's done. It's it's really hard to tell. A thermometer is going to help here. Uh, doing it several times will help. But once you get to that nappe consistency, think like ranch dressing, you know, like like something like that. Then you're going to want to take it off the heat immediately and pour it while it's still hot over your chocolate mixture. Now, I'm pouring it through a fine strainer here to catch any stray bits of egg white that might be stuck with the yolk. So you might want to do the same thing. Now, I'm going to let it sit for five minutes. I'm not even going to touch it for five minutes. Just make sure I'm covering up all the chocolate, as much of the chocolate and butter as I can, because it's going to this hot liquid is going to melt that and turn it into a, a mixable demi-liquid that I can turn into ganache. After five minutes, take a whisk, put it in the center, and just start really whisking just the center. Once you start to see that glossy dark chocolate color in the center, then start incorporating more and more of it and whisk the whole thing. Whisk it until it is that beautiful glossy chocolate cover all over. You want to get that Initial whisk in the center, though, to get that emulsion stable before you start incorporating the whole thing. Once that's done and, and whisked really well, add your additives. Now, this has two additives. It has corn syrup and it has sour cream. We're going to whisk those in and we're going to let this sit in a cold room, you know, in your regular room temperature room for until the cake's done cooling. Now, this may still feel a little loose. If it does feel a little loose at that point, you can put it in the fridge for a little while to chill it down. But once it become, once it chills down, it is a very, very stable frosting. Now, I'm going to use a square pan. You can unmold this and do a layer cake frosting thing. And this stuff also pipes really well. So if you want to pipe it, you can. But I'm just going to slather it on the top because uh, I know it's delicious. And uh, it's going to be wonderful just like this. Frosting's really stable, spreads really great. The taste is amazing on this frosting. Really dark, rich, beautiful flavor. So I hope you try this. Remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell at the bottom to get the notifications. In the, and in the comments, please let me know if you like this type of video better. If you like the voiceover better than you like the actual uh, cooking show style better. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and share with your friends. Thank you.